Our boss, Rupert Murdoch, is transitioning from chair of our parent company, Fox Corporation. The world he often shaped heard today he would shape it no more. This is real life secession. Rupert Murdoch told his employees he was in robust health but standing down. Breaking news this morning, conservative media titan Rupert Murdoch is stepping down. In his farewell note, he sent them a rallying cry against elites who have open contempt for those who are not members of their rarefied class. Most of the media is in cahoots with those elites, peddling political narratives rather than pursuing the truth. Freedom of the press mustn't be one-sided just for a publisher to, to uh, speak as he pleases. His lifelong self-image as anti-elitist, clashing to the very end of his business career with the image many others have of him as the ultimate member of the billionaire global elite. Rupert Murdoch is no longer boss of parent companies that include Fox, The Wall Street Journal, The Australian, The Sun, The Times, Harper Collins, and many, many more. The Australian born son of a press magnate, he handed over his chairmanships to the elder of his two sons, here on the left. He hated hereditary elites but proudly built a dynasty. The family battled to succeed him captured forever in HBO's hit satire. When I read of the abuses of power alleged in my crew's division, well, that was the worst day of my life. This is the most humble day of my life. Okay, thank you. At that point, I believe my son was across that operationally. I think my son can perhaps answer that in more detail. He was a lot closer to I'll, it. I'll come to your son in a minute. Rupert Murdoch was speaking at the Leveson inquiry, prompted by the phone hacking scandal which forced him to close the news of the world. He was asked about his decades of press ownership in Britain. I've never asked a Prime Minister for anything. Mr Murdoch said that he really didn't like our European policies. He wished me to change our European policies. If we couldn't change our European policies, his papers could not and would not support the Conservative government. Margaret Thatcher helped Rupert Murdoch take over the Times newspaper and crush the print trade unions, changing the way newspapers were made. Her successors tried to keep Rupert Murdoch close too, fearful of his influence. We all did too much cozying up to Rupert Murdoch. I think we'd agree. His editors always had him in, in, in mind. They always had him in mind in a very, 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 very big way right there. I'd say that what he managed to do with most senior politicians was to have him in a smaller way, but there. Just kind of nagging away. Politicians most feared the papers he'd turned tabloid. The News of the World and The Sun, ruthlessly deployed against political enemies. He shoved what already might have been on the change further in that direction. To the right? Yes. Uh, he, to the populist right. To the uh, low blow, cheap shot right. Late in his career, Rupert Murdoch played a critical role in two giant political ruptures on either side of the Atlantic. Brexit, the run up to Brexit, the aftermath of Brexit, uh, Rupert Murdoch is inextricably linked. The commander in chief and the president of the United States my friend Donald J. Trump. Rupert Murdoch's success building Fox News had defied the critics, but many think its brutal partisanship made Donald Trump's presidency possible. And thank you to my very good friend, Rupert Murdoch. There's only one Rupert that we know. Over the decades, Rupert Murdoch made sure he could walk into the White House as easily as he walked into number 10. But he continued to think of himself as an outsider. This is Sky Television. On both sides of the Atlantic throughout his business career, Rupert Murdoch dared to do things differently. Launching Sky TV, he changed the way we watch television. You're seen as something of a threat by your fellow broadcasters here. Well, uh, yes, I suppose so. Uh, or perhaps, you know, the barbarian at the gates. He always proclaimed himself the buccaneering rebel, but across continents often tried to dominate markets. What made you think that this whole thing would work? I just had a hunch that, you know, there was a room for another point of view and a, another service. But when and, you uh, I don't like monopolies when I see them, so... Uh, no, and, and yet, Unless, you you get <laughs> Unless you own them, Fox News boss Roger Ailes quit. Rupert Murdoch managed to smile.
The global merchant of news couldn't face the word retirement and said he was transitioning to a new role. His critics argue he sacrificed truth and decency, pursuing viewers, readers and market share. Rupert Murdoch argued there was intrinsic good in supplying whatever the market would pay for. Gary Given reporting on. Joining me now is David Yellen, former editor of The Sun newspaper, who now has a podcast, When It Hits the Fan, on the rival network, the BBC. Thanks for coming to the studio, David. Uh, he described himself as a barbarian at the gate. What was he like to work with as a barbarian? The Rupert Murdoch that I work for and that well, everybody worked for mm. is very, very different. So I think it's, good to, it's important to start off this evening by saying he was a... He was a different from the write-up he gets. He was a very good and remains a very good and attentive boss. And he, he changed my life and he listened to me. Didn't he shout he, at you ever? He, he never shouted at me. Other people shouted at me on his behalf. Ah, OK. <laughs> he got the other people to do the shouting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But was he, was, so was he a straight talker? What was his particular style with, you know, with his editors, with people like you? Well, for me, I was deputy editor of the New York Post uh, in, the, in the late 90s when, when Tony Blair was elected here. And clearly he wanted somebody who was left of the aisle to edit mm. The Sun, and that was me. And so he used to come into my office and start to talk to me, sometimes for hours, particularly on Sunday when I was editing the paper. And he just, it was... It was thrilling. It was exciting. I, I can't tell you how amazing it was. Because you were close to the power or because of what he said? Because he was showing an interest in me. Yeah. It was flattering. And I was a young... I was in yeah. my early 30s. It was very exciting. So, looking back, do you think that he killed newspapers in this country or did he give them some salvation? Oh, he saved newspapers in this country. The, the Times and Sunday Times would not be where they are now without him. Because of the it, printing unions? Yeah. Uh, there are negatives, and I'm sure we'll go on to talk about them, mm. but... Every working journalist, you included, Matt, owes Rupert Murdoch about 10 to 20 per cent of their salary. Because without I'm going to write him a cheque right without... now, because he needs, <laughs> he needs the money. He's missing meals, uh, Absolutely. You know, without the whopping revolution in particular in this country, but he's, he, no one has invested in newspapers in the last century like Rupert Murdoch. Um, OK, so what about the negative side? You know, the lowering of the tone, yeah. the debasement of British culture, is that fair? Well, I think what happened in this country, um, hacking aside, is pretty, pretty small beer. I think the biggest negative against, against uh, uh, Rupert Murdoch and the legacy is what has happened at Fox News. Uh, and I think, that, I think that's an Achilles heel at the company. Mm. You know, I talked to lots of people there, obviously. They've got many friends sure. there, particularly in the US. And they can't see that enabling Donald yeah. Trump and enabling the insurrection and what happened at the end of Trump's presidency was a, a very dark, dark moment. But even saying phone hacking aside by just brushing it to one side, I mean, that was a big deal. You know, it almost sank him. And it was, and it, it was deeply shocking to much of the British public. I thought, the thing about Rupert Murdoch is everybody thinks that he is in total control of all these editors, that he calls the editors morning, noon and night and says, do this, do that. It's not like that at all. I think the mistakes that he made, the big two errors, are when basically he wasn't involved. He wasn't that involved in the UK when hacking happened, and he wasn't involved with Roger Ailes uh, on a day-to-day basis when Fox. When the but Fox he prided himself on being, an, you know, a newspaper man. You know, his fingertips yeah. were, you know, dirty with newsprint. I mean, surely he must have known about phone hacking. He must have been at least vaguely aware of what was going on. I know this was the subject of. Well, I mean, I don't know the answer to that question, no. but I'm pretty sure he didn't know a thing. The details? No, not a thing. What was his most positive legacy for this country? Many people listening to this programme will, you know, will bristle at the mere question, yeah. but what was his most positive legacy here? Choice. He enabled choice. Anybody like... I'm a Man City fan, right, so I'm... But, you know, I love watching Premiership on, on Sky and on TV. Without him, the standard of football in this country would be much lower. There are more newspapers, there are more movies, there's more choice in the world. Uh, because of Rupert Murdoch. On one level, he's the consummate insider. You know, he's the bloke who can get, you know, prime ministers into his office. Yeah. He can make or break governments, yeah. you know, in the US, in the UK. Yeah. But was his strength also that he was an outsider? That it, ultimately it, he was from Australia, yeah. and, and uh, although he had an American passport, and maybe yeah. there was a certain chippiness about that as well. Well, even in this statement on his retiring, he can't help but have a go at yeah. the... Elites, by which he means we, you means you, by the way, yes, and all the guys yeah, down and there. You. <laughs> and you. And exactly, exactly. Uh, I know that was in our opening statement, on the, I mean, the opening of the programme. Why would he do that in a resignation letter to, you know, go on about the elites this is, this when he's is, a billionaire? This, this is the legend that he tells himself and all his people, but the reality is that Rupert Murdoch is not the outsider. He is the elite. That's the thing. Does he not see the irony of that statement? He wouldn't agree with that at all. He, he, he definitely sees himself as, as the total outsider. 
whereas he's usurped uh, and disrupted media in, across many, many continents, and he's the insider. I mean, do his papers still have the influence on British politics that they once had? And the, the one that they did have, what exactly was that? Uh, the politicians in this country think so, and therefore he does. Ah. He doesn't have that influence and hasn't had that influence for some time. But the political class in this country sold out to Rupert Murdoch a long time ago, and it's still and, going and on And when now. he did have that influence, how would you sum that influence up? I saw myself that he was, he was always actually a little bit concerned about that. For example, when I was working for Kelvin McKenzie at The Sun, uh, mm. in my early days, we ran a front page, It's The Sun What Won It, uh, after the Kinnock. And he was page. concerned about that headline? He hated it. Really? He absolutely, you don't talk about that in public, you don't talk Wasn't about that Wasn't he flattered power. by that degree of power? No, no, no. Uh, although Rupert was Australian, he was brought up uh, in, in um, Melbourne and Adelaide in an era that was more English than English. Mm. And you don't, you don't boast about power. You don't, you don't do that. It's very un-Murdochian to do so. Well, it's very un-Murdochian of you to turn up here. Thank you. Well, perhaps Murdochian. Thank you very much, David. Yen. Thank you. Thank it's you so much. Kieran. Cheers, Matt. Well, as we've been hearing, Fox News, conceived by Rupert Murdoch in the 1990s, changed the US political landscape. The right-leaning 24-hour network became a platform for the Republican Party, taking Donald Trump under its wing and propelling his success. This year, Fox was forced to pay hundreds of millions of dollars to settle a case related to its coverage of false claims following the 2020 presidential election. So, what now for the Fox News Channel? Our Washington correspondent, Siobhan Kennedy, has the story. When Rupert Murdoch, then, believe it or not, a relative unknown in America, launched his Fox News network in 1996, the idea was to appeal to a conservative audience to provide a balance from what he saw as the democratic spin of the left-leaning networks. Murdoch was already active in America with his tabloid newspaper, The New York Post, but nothing was to prepare the United States for what was to come. I'm not hiding behind an editor and saying, no, I had nothing to do with the policy or whatever. Uh, I do get involved in it and I'm, don't make a secret of it. Having installed a Republican media commentator, Roger Ailes, at the helm, Murdoch set about growing his 24-hour news empire, pioneering the use of fast-paced graphics and news tickers to bombard the audience, which grew exponentially. President George W. Bush has launched war against Saddam Hussein. By the time of the September 11th attacks and subsequent war in Iraq, Fox had become the dominant cable news network in America, and in January 2002, it surpassed CNN in ratings for the first time. And with it, Fox took on an altogether more partisan, combative tone, backing George W. Bush and then, famously, one Donald J. Trump, all the while actively peddling negative headlines about Democrats. The Democrat parade of idiocy last night was so spectacular. A strategy that came to a crescendo during the 2020 election, when ironically Fox was first to call the state of Arizona for Joe Biden. That is a big get infuriating Trump, who Murdoch by now had soured on, but nevertheless allowed Fox News to continue to bolster his election lies. We talked about the Dominion software. I know that there were voting irregularities. Tell me An error of judgment that lay at the heart of a $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit brought against Fox by Dominion voting systems, whom Trump and his cronies had accused of helping to rig the election. The machines can be hacked. There's no question about that. Fox parroted the allegations despite legal filings revealing that Murdoch himself didn't support them. Do you believe that Dominion was engaged in a massive and coordinated effort to steal the 2020 presidential election? No, Mr Murdoch replied. Yet Fox repeated the allegations anyway, allegedly just to keep ratings high. And as a result, make America, thanks to Mr Murdoch and Fox News, now more polarised than ever before.
Siobhan Kennedy reporting. Well, joining me now from New York is Michael Wolf, the American journalist and author whose new book, The Fall, The End of the Murdoch Empire, is out next week. Michael, great to have you back on the programme. Do you tell him to resign to coincide with the publication of your new book? Uh, yes, we've, we've sat down together and we really conspired <laughs> to, um, uh, to help me sell books. Many, many people do this. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. But curiously, I do understand from from. I mean, I'm 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 I speak to people inside um, inside the Murdoch Empire all the time, and have for 15 years. Um, um, that that there has been enormous amount of concern, exactly because of my book, that it has been described as as um, um, uh, the and publication is, is next week as a bus coming at him, right. because much of the, much of the book is 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 about the story of a 92 year old and of a 92 year old unable to um, uh, to effectively manage his company any longer. And also, I want to manage his private life or his you know his marital life. I mean, he got divorced from his fourth wife, Jerry Hall, and then he almost got married to. Um, and Leslie Smith, who kind of barged into his house. I mean, this is a 92-year-old behaving like a teenager almost. What's going on there? And was well, that no, significant? no. I, I, I would, I, I would say it's a 92-year-old behaving like a 92-year-old. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, he's, you know, I mean, I think he clearly wants companionship. He needs companionship, like, like everyone. Um, but. Um, um, you know, this this was a two week engagement, mm. um, and it was a two week engagement partly because his children were were like, okay, let's this something's gone wrong here. Mm. Let's step in and, and deal with this. Um, but again, um, you know, he's ninety two. It's not his fault. He's ninety two. Um, what might be his fault, or the or the fault of other people in the company, or a company that has no effective mm. oversight other than the 92-year-old himself, is letting this go on as long as it has. And do you think that he will exercise influence from the sidelines more than perhaps his resignation letter would suggest? Well, let me, let me explain something um, um, at the heart of this and something slightly complicated here um, is that Rupert Murdoch, even in retirement, um, uh, continues to hold the only meaningful piece of power. Um, it is his proxy that keeps his son Lachlan as, as the CEO. Mm. Um, upon his death, his, uh, uh, Rupert's votes are divided evenly among his four oldest children, each who have maintained an, an equal amount of of the of the voting mm. shares of the company. That means that it is these four um, four oldest uh, th these these four children, his four oldest children, will control the right. future of the company. Um, they will decide whether their brother Lachlan um, stays in that job or or is removed from that job, and. And because they cannot agree on anything yeah. at this point, they are they are implacably there are implacable positions here. Um, there, you, you know, it's it's almost impossible to imagine mm. a scenario in which um, in which this company continues in its present right. form. This uh, is it, it will not. Yeah. This is fascinating, isn't it? So actually, the succession battle that that seems to have been sort of put to one side. You know, that will erupt, you're saying, once Rupert Murdoch has gone to a better place, as it were. Yes, absolutely. There, there is no, and, and, and right now, the Lachlan, Lachlan Murdoch sitting in as the CEO is, um, I think the word would yeah. be a lame duck. Okay, so James Murdoch, who has sort of stepped aside, um, has said that he wants to take over the Fox News network run by his brother, and turn it into a force for good. How does that even work? Well, you know, I mean, I think when you have two billion dollars in your pocket, and each of Rupert Murdoch's six children have each have two billion dollars in their pocket, um, I, I, I guess you feel that you can do a lot mm. of good. You can okay. do whatever you want, um, and e even at the, even at great cost to your to your shareholders. Um, now. His sister Elizabeth feels um, feels that they ought to sell it. That mm. cable cable news 
cable channels in the US are not going to become more valuable. They're only going to become less valuable. So right. why don't they just get out now? Okay, uh, good point. What about Fox News's role in the forthcoming election and you know the likely nomination, possible nomination of Donald Trump? Extremely complicated because, you know, I mean, Rupert Murdoch detests, uh, detests Donald Trump. I mean, it is, I think, I think it's a, it's a, it's, I think it bothers him every day. I think it eats at him that he made Donald Trump the president of the United States. And for the past year, he has been trying to prevent Donald Trump from becoming the president of the United States again. Um, um, the, the, the candidacy of Ron DeSantis is basically a, a bubble inflated by by Rupert Murdoch now quickly deflating yeah. um and Fox is and this is a it's yeah. a kind of um you know Shakespearean the Fox Fox network which elected um Donald Trump is, is now at war with him um so what the outcome of that of, of right. that is going to be is completely unclear at this point. And finally and briefly, Michael, what about all those newspapers? Do you think he's going to sell them off? You know, the, the, the Sun, the Times, the Wall Street Journal? Well, I think his yes, I think his heirs will sell them off. I I, I don't see any any mm. any any future in which in which the the newspapers in the UK, in the US, in Australia are still owned by by um, a Murdoch-controlled company. Wow. Time to apply for a new job somewhere. Okay. Uh, Michael Wolf, thank you very much indeed for coming on the programme.